Amen, amen. If you were part of our men's retreat this weekend, could you please stand? Amen. This weekend, uh, we were privileged to, to go away about 33 men in total uh, to meet God on the mountain of Camp Pinnacle. We, we were challenged to become better men, challenged to become better husbands, challenged to become better fathers. We learned that men who are made in the image of God uh, avoid passivity, we lead courageously, and we invest eternally. And we were led throughout this whole weekend by just a wonderful man of God who God used powerfully to invest in the lives of the men at Central, Eric Cummings. I have known, I have known Eric Cummings now for approximately 15 years. We first met in Miami where he came to the Bible college that I was attending as a chapel speaker. I, I found out about the ministry that he was involved with. Uh, he was working with the youth in the Miami area, leading during that time period over 1,000 young people in Miami to make commitment towards purity in a True Love Waits program that Eric conducted for, for approximately about five to 10 years. He, he led, let me say it again, 1, Thousand, over 1,000 young men and women to commit to a life of abstinence until marriage in a True Love Waits program. He has since gone on to, to become pastor of New Life Church in Carroll City, where he's served for the past 14 years. And, and I'm Delighted that you will be able to, to, to taste, to get a piece of what we enjoyed this entire weekend. So Eric, could you please come and bless the people of God this morning? Good morning. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, come on, give God some praise on this Lord's day. The psalmist said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I'm truly humbled and grateful to be here with you in Chile for me, New York City, and to share with my dear brother, uh, his wonderful wife, and the great men of Central Baptist Church. Let's give these brothers a hand once again on today. I want to thank all those who have blessed and enriched my life in, in just a wonderful way this weekend. Uh, those who hosted me, uh, Brother Derek and Sister Sonia, thank you for your hospitality. For all the brothers who uh, took time to receive me. I feel like I have a new family here in the Northeast uh, United States. Amen. 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 So we give God glory and honor. I bring you greetings from the New Life Church in Miami, Florida. Uh, grateful to be here with you. And for just a few moments on this wonderful, wonderful day, uh, I want to share with you uh, briefly uh, from the word of God in Ephesians chapter five, Ephesians chapter five, Ephesians chapter five, amen. And we're going to begin at verse number 15. When you find it, if you're able, please stand with us as we read God's word together. Ephesians five, beginning at verse number 15. Amen. Amen. I'm reading with you on this morning from the English Standard Version of the Bible. Please follow with the translation you have before you again. It reads, verse 15, you find words similar to these. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. 
The word of the Lord is blessed. Will you bow with me for a word of prayer? Dear God, today, we're ever grateful for your divine invitation that you've extended to us, that we might meet you on this Lord's day in your house. It's our prayer, God, as we come, we come to worship you, O Father, to lift your name on high so that you would be glorified on this day. God, we acknowledge our unworthiness for this hour, but God, we thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our many needs. We pray, O God, now that you would arrest our wandering thoughts Remove any preoccupation or potential hindrance, but grant us, O oh God, at this moment, a divine appointment in your presence. O oh God, move upon every heart, every mind, and every soul. Have your way now in this place. I thank you, Lord, for this privilege to stand once again and proclaim the life-changing message of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I do so now, God, I pray that you would forgive my failings, my inadequacies, and my neglects. Fill me today, O oh God, with your precious Holy Spirit, and use me now, Lord, as a channel of your healing grace. Now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And all that love the Lord Jesus said, amen. 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 You may be seated in his presence. For just a few moments, I want to label this message today, let the spirit move. Let the spirit move. Reading for you again, verse number 18, in particular, the B section of that verse, it simply says, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the spirit. Often the question is asked, what does it mean to be filled with the spirit? Various denominations have various announcements as to what it means to be filled with the spirit. But as I stand before you today uh, from uh, my study and from my conviction, I'm led to think that being filled with the Spirit means basically having great joy in the Lord. Scripture tells us in Nehemiah 8 and 10 that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And when we are filled with the Spirit of God, it means that there will be power in this joy. There'll be power in this relationship. There'll be power in this dynamic that allows me to overcome the besetting sins of life and also to be a powerful witness in the world in which we live. God has called and equipped each and every one of us with a specific challenge that we are to be light in the midst of darkness in the respective places in which God has called us to serve. But I learned a long time ago we can never do God's work without God's power. Oftentimes we may have preferences and thoughts and ideals and concepts about what we feel or believe that God wants to do in and through the lives of his people, but we'll never truly know until we wholeheartedly surrender to the will of God and allowing his Holy Spirit to have freedom to lead, to guide, to direct, to order, to put the things in their proper place as they need to be so that we can fulfill the kingdom mandate that God has given to us as Christ followers. Any present issue in our lives that we might be dealing with, any struggle that we may be encountering, anything that we may be confronting at this present season in our lives, in some way or at some level, God is equipping us He's molding us, he's shaping us because he wants to bring transformation not only in us, but in the midst of whatever that situation or scenario is. In order for that change or transition or transformation to take place, it requires that you and I are open to being filled with the Spirit of God so that he can have his way in our lives. We cannot place the limitations on what God desires to do in and through us. We cannot allow our preferences to overrule God's purpose. We cannot allow our agendas to push aside that which God wants to do in our lives and in our circumstances. And so as we look at this, the filling or controlling of God's Holy Spirit is a profound reality in the life of the Christian. It is a profound reality simply because it is the only way that true change can take place. You may have some willful reform. You may have some self-help that you have moved some things around and you have shifted some things. Maybe you've even on the physical realm, you've gone through a makeover and changed your hairstyle or maybe changed the way you dress. But brothers and sisters, ultimately, the change that's needed, it's, it's a God-sized change needed and only the Holy Spirit can bring it forth in our lives. 
It is then when we open ourselves up to that, that we look closely at verse number 18, understanding that when God comes into our lives, he didn't come to leave us the same way in which he found us. He didn't come to leave us stuck in the rut of life. He didn't come leaving us with the same attitudes and issues that we pressed and struggled with, but he begins a process of shaping us. How can we allow or why should we allow the spirit to move and bring change to our lives? First thing I want you to understand today, the reason, the reason why we should let the spirit move. First and foremost, our problem and the problems of our world are spiritual problems. We must understand the nature of the battle in which we fight. We must understand the reality of the simple fact that every last one of us in this room has several things in common, even that we're not aware of, but one of them is that we have a stalker called Satan. And each and every day, he is about his job and about his business and moving forth to, to stir up things in our lives. And so if we do not do what God has commanded us, the reason why is verse 18 says, be filled with the Spirit. That means I need to be obedient to God's command to take the handcuffs off, if you will, to allow him to have his way in our lives. This is not a suggestion in verse 18. It's not a request. It's a command. And as it lays out before us, it's important for you and I to allow ourselves to be filled with God's spirit because God commands it. That means there's some things that are going on in my life. There's some things happening around me that, that God has ordained or brought forth this specific change before me or in front of me so that I'll know that I'm wholeheartedly dependent upon him moving in that situation. See, as long as you're in control, you can make a few phone calls and get some things done. As long as you're in control, you can influence a few folks to do a few things for you, but there are some things in our lives that only God can get done. There's some things going on that only God can move. And so when I get in the posture of obedience and surrender to his command to allow the Holy Spirit to move in my life, great things can take place. But here's the concept I want you to understand. It is a process or the context of that verse is to be continually filled with the Spirit. It means it is a process. It is not an option for us but it is mandated here in scripture that it's the idea that it is a continuous process. That every day when our feet hits the floor, that we open ourselves so that God can have his way in and through us. That the spirit can move us. That God can give us a, a divine appointments. That God can begin to say, listen, I, I want to use you even though you're going through what you're going through. I often challenge individuals that when you're going through rough moments in your life, it is a beautiful thing to go and help somebody else. It is a beautiful thing to let God use you in the midst of your infirmity, to use you in the midst of your challenge so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. Because when you look back, you'll recognize it wasn't you, but it was God moving in you that you didn't magnify your issue, but you allow God to use you through it. As we look here, there's something that we need to understand. This command is addressed to every believer. As you read the entire fifth chapter, we know we talk about husbands and wives and children and parents eventually in chapter six, employers, employees, but all of these things is addressed to every believer. The reason we must be filled with the spirit is that it is the Spirit of God that we need to control us moment by moment, minute by minute, day by day, hour by hour, week by week. Because it is only by God's grace that we're able to move forward because with uh, every privilege comes a responsibility. And so our obligation is that as believers, we have tremendous responsibilities that we must fulfill. But there are things on my plate and things on your plate and things on others' plates, that every time we look at them, it's like those old days when grandma would fix dinner and you would say, Grandma, I don't want to eat the green beans. 
Uh, if you could take that away from me, I, I don't want to eat the green beans because it doesn't taste good. But grandma would tell you, go sit back down and eat the green beans because it'll make you stronger. It'll do something beneficial in the long run. There are times we take our plates to God and say, God, must I go through this? Must I be the one to be used in this situation? And you say, Lord, can I not have to deal with it? And he reminds us, won't you let the spirit have his way? If I'm obedient, if I fulfill the obligation, then I look at it as an obligation for my life of worship. As a worshiper of God, I got to obey and say, Lord, have your way to be alive with joy in the reality of Christ moving in my life. This is the overflow of the spirit-filled life. John 4 and 24 say the true worshipers worship in what? Spirit and in truth. But allow God's spirit to move. We have obligations in our marriage life. We have obligations in our home life. We have our obligations in our church life. And so we must submit to what God wants to do. On the job, things are asked of us every day. But we should move forward and say, Lord, may I complete what's asked of me to your glory and to your honor. Lord, when things pop up in the midst of my home life, God, find a way in the midst of a very difficult situation to use me to bring glory and honor to you. When there's chaos in our culture, God, help me to stand for you so that you will be glorified and change can come to our communities and our regions. There's a reason we must allow the spirit to move because in that there are some opportunities. Look with me at verse 16. In verse 16, we see it says, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. This is God's reminder that we are to use our time and use our opportunities wisely. Use our time and our opportunities wisely because God provides what I like to say are golden opportunities. We don't want them to slip through our fingers because the spirit is not in control. We're praying for the community. We're praying for a loved one. We want them to come to Christ, but then when God sets the table, we're not led by the spirit and it slips right through the cracks. But when we avail ourselves to allow the spirit to move, God opens our eyes. If you literally want to say remove the scales from our eyes so that we can see the needs of people as God sees the needs of people. And the more I see what God shows to me, he moves me further from preference and he requires for me to embrace purpose. But in order to fulfill God's purpose, I cannot do it in my college education. I can't even do it in my seminary education. I cannot do it with my civic responsibility. I cannot do it with any other earthly knowledge I have gathered because there are some things that we need the wisdom of God and his spirit to move in and through us, that we will move forth with what God desires to bring forth in our lives so that we can see not just marginal change, but we can see true transformation, not only in our communities, but won't we let God have his way in our churches while we're at it? <laughs> Second thing I want you to see is the requirements of letting the spirit move. Acts chapter one and verse eight tells us that we are given the power of God to preach the gospel, that our opportunities are a reason to allow God to move freely. But with that, we see the reason, but now there are the requirements. What's one of the major requirements to let the spirit move? It is easy to answer because it simply is in two words, total submission and surrender to Jesus Christ. Total and complete, sold out, giving up everything for the king of glory allowing him to move freely, abandoning our will, abandoning our intellect, abandoning our agendas, abandoning of our preconceived notions, abandoning things that we've embraced as truth that are not truth, abandoning all of those things that could hijack God's ability to have his way in our lives. But in that submission and surrender, one of the great requirements to let the Spirit of God move, it is our time, it is our talents, it is our treasures, it is every part of our being wholeheartedly surrendered to the control of God. Now I'm here to tell you there's an old saying, be, pray, be careful what you pray for. 
Because we can gather and we can strategize. We can plan and we can approach. And we can endeavor to move forward with whatever God wants to ever do in our lives. Let me just tell you something, brothers and sisters. When God begins to move, it doesn't always feel good. When God begins to move, it's not always comfortable. When God begins to move, he begins to stir some things up. And, and, and you'll find, listen, listen, I don't want to let that go. It reminds me of an aunt I had some years ago. She was getting her house redone, and she said, I want everything out. Take everything out. Redo the whole house. And the people came in, and they started to move. And it seemed like every room they went in, they get ready to throw her dress. No, 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 no. I don't want you to throw the dresser out. They go into another room. They get ready to take some. No, 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 no. I don't want you to throw the chair out. They get in the living room. And yes, I'm, I must admit it, she still had shag carpet. And they were pulling up the shag. No, 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 no. Don't take the carpet out the house. Everything that she said she was ready to let go of, she didn't want to let go of it. Don't you know when the Spirit of God moves, there's some things that you don't want to let go of. And when God begins to move, you're sort of in that tug of war of, of, of between your preference and God's purpose and you're pulling back and forth. But unless you surrender it, God can't really have his way in that situation. Every day of our lives, we understand that one of the key elements is that we must saturate ourselves and commit ourselves to the studying of God's word. The more we study God's word, the more he gives us insight into his heart, then we understand it is God's heart, it is our hands. That means God wants to use us, but even though he's using us, it's not about us. It's his heart. And so as we serve and as we move and as we do what God has called us to do, it is always important to make sure that we take our hands off and let God have his way. Because see, my heart is tainted. Scripture tells me my heart is jacked up. Uh, my heart has got some issues. My heart has some things that need to be addressed. And so when I'm trying to do God's work with my plan, and if I don't surrender and allow God's will to be done, then I'm not going to ever see God fully manifest himself and doing great and miraculous things in the lives of people. There are strongholds in the lives of the people in the community. There are strongholds in the lives of the people in our families. And so therefore God chooses to use us to be a part of redeeming lost man back to his father. So how do we do this? We do it by understanding that there's a parallel passage in Ephesians 5, it is Colossians 3. It simply says in Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. When you study God's word, it's not just for you to be better at the Bible brain challenge. It is not for you just to be able to intimidate those around you who may not have such a firm grasp of scripture. But it's for you to take that, open yourself out, and allow you to stand in God's presence and allow him to begin to see that word become active in your life. As his word becomes active in your life, a person who is, who is full of some, uh, you know, substance that allows them to be, if you will, overcome or under the influence of said substance, then puts themselves in a position that they're always close to the source of whatever, whatever it is that they're under the influence of. But for you and I, if we want to be filled with the Spirit, we must put ourselves in close proximity to the Word of God. That means that I want to make sure that I have an ample supply close by so that at any given moment, I can seek God's face for the needs in my life so I can seek God's face for the direction he desires to bring forth because you know that those who are under the influence of said substance, they don't have to go far to re-up. They keep it close by. And so as long as you take the word of God and you study the word of God and you saturate your mind with scripture, you can remind yourself every once in a while when you begin to deviate and get off course with what thus says the Lord, allow it to continue to keep you on the straight and narrow path. But won't you let the spirit move? Not only do we see the reason why we need to let the spirit move, 
Not only do we see these requirements, but what about the results of what happens when the spirit moves? There are some powerful results that can happen when God's spirit moves. Let me just remind you in verse number 19. If you look there, it simply says, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Speaking, how we talk to one another, how we share with one another, how we build up and edify one another. The words that come out of our mouths should always strive to build up men and women, to build up and strengthen that which we want to accomplish for the glory of God. And as we begin to do all of those things, verse 19 talks about singing, expressing that God-given joy that's in your heart because you know that you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. You surrendered yourself wholeheartedly to the will of God. And when God can have his way, great things can happen in the lives of his people. When God can have his way. Verse 20, he talks a little bit about sacrifice. And when we sacrifice, we need to understand that we need to sacrificially give of ourselves. Sacrificially surrender our program, our preference. So that God's purpose is always fulfilled in our lives and in our midst. And when we can do that, we see again God's spirit move in a mighty way. In verse 21, we see the element of submitting and expressing God-given love to one another each and every day. And so often, I must say to you, there's an indictment in our culture. And there's an indictment in a lot of gatherings where men and women who love Christ come together. And the indictment often is said that Jesus can't even get in our meetings because our preference overrules God's purpose. But when we let the Spirit of God move, God is able to do great and mighty things in the lives of his people. I want to share this with you in closing. There was a young man in our community for many years, we saw him under the influence, walking up and down the sidewalk. Everyone would mock him and laugh at him. In the occasional moments when he would stagger into church, there were some who said, send him away. And there were some who said, just love on him. Just maybe today will be the day that God turns his life around. And so time and time again, he would come and walk up and down that block the kids would mock him. People would look at him and shake their hands. But there was at the core of all of that understanding that God was doing something in the life of this young man. Because every at least month or so, he would stagger into the worship service. And when he would come in, there were some who embraced him. There were some who were afraid of him. There were some who said they, they just didn't trust his presence in the room. And I remember at the time, my father, who was the pastor, saying, if God brought him here, we need to be equipped and ready to meet the need that he has. Now, when you meet the needs that are in front of you, they don't always look like you. They don't always sound like you. They don't always behave like you. They don't always dress like you. They don't always understand like you. But God has put them in your midst and he's drawn them through the power of the Holy Spirit. One Sunday morning, when the word was going forth, this young man rose from his seat at the time of invitation and surrendered his life to Jesus Christ. That was the genesis of a mighty move of God. Today, that man doesn't walk up and down 173rd Drive talking to himself any longer. Today, he has a wife. Today, he has two kids. Today, he's a member of God's church. Today, he's a tax-paying citizen. Today, he has a job. Because when the Spirit of God moves in the midst of God's people, great and miraculous things happen in the lives of God's people. I wonder if since Central Baptist doesn't mind letting the spirit move in and through your lives. Let the spirit move. Let him have his way. 
one of the things about when the spirit moves, it brings all of us to a place of change. We live in a changing culture. We live in a chaotic culture. But God has provided for us to be calm in the midst of a chaotic culture. How can we be calm when we know that God is in control, that we're living for him, we're walking with him, and we're allowing him to lead us in the way he would have us to go? So God gives that calmness. But for you and I, as we sit here today, we want to make sure we let God have his way. And so whatever you're at the doorstep of, maybe it's the most difficult trial you've ever endured. Maybe it's the tremendous challenge you've ever faced. Maybe it's a situation that you've been wrestling with over a period of time. But let me encourage you today, and I heard it said this way, and I don't remember who said it, but I heard it said this way, that you'll never change until the pain to remain the same is greater than the pain to make that change. And so when you allow God to have his way in your life, you need to know there are going to be some tough days. There are going to be some difficult moments. But when you face it in the power and authority of who our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is, you open yourself up to allow God to mold you and shape you. Not for your personal glory, not for anybody to look at you and say, look how good you're doing. But for them to look at you and say, I know no one but God can do what they've done in the life of that individual. And so today, the change we all need is to every day strive to totally submit and surrender every part of who we are to a loving Heavenly Father so that God can have his way in our lives and have his way in our midst. I'm going to ask you today to consider what God is saying to you with every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to take this moment today and ask yourself, Am I placing limitations on God? If I put God in a box, if I put God in a box in my personal life, if I put God in a box in my business life, if I put God in a box in my service to him, in my church life, and if that's the case, I want to challenge you today to surrender all and submit all to him. Maybe you're here today and at times you struggle moving past some of the things that are happening in your life, but I want you to know the first level of surrender is to wholeheartedly, the first requirement to letting the Spirit move is to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It goes on to say in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful, he's just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. In Romans 10, 13, he says, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. If you're here today and you've never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, let me just tell you the greatest decision you can make for your present, for your future, and even to give you the courage to move past your past is total, complete submission and surrender to Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here today, you've been walking with the Lord for a season, but at some point you've lost your way. But you can acknowledge and you can recognize and you can see that you've fallen away and you need to come back home to the heart of God. Surrender all to him. Give your life back to him. Rededicate, recommit yourself to Jesus Christ. If that is you today, I want to encourage you. Won't you do that? You're in the right place at the right time to do the right thing. To meet the Lord here in this place, he's here. To meet you right where you are. To begin to mold you and shape you in his will and in his way. Maybe you're here today. You have a relationship with Christ, but you're struggling. Maybe you got some news. Maybe you got some issues going on in your life and you're standing in the need of prayer. I'm here to tell you every time you come into the church, you come into God's spiritual hospital. Don't leave without surrendering all your symptoms to him. Let God move in your life. And so if you're standing in the need of prayer today, won't you let God have his way? Whatever you stand in need of today, I want to challenge you in this few moments. You can come to this altar. If you're dealing with something physically or spiritually, won't you yield yourself fully to the Spirit's control? I'm going to pray, and as soon as I conclude this prayer, the season of invitation is extended. And we invite you to trust the Lord today. Dear God, today we thank you. We praise you. As we bow humbly before you, Lord, there are not enough words to articulate how desperately we stand in need of you. 
I pray, oh God, now for all who are bowed in this place. I pray, Lord, that at this moment right now, in this time of invitation, that, God, you move in our hearts. God, we'll be transparent in your presence to openly submit or surrender whatever we need to do for you. But, God, to really allow your Holy Spirit to fill us, to move uninhibited, unhindered in our lives and in our midst. For, Lord, you want us to overcome the besetting sins of life. You want us, oh God, to be bold witnesses for you. So, God, I pray now at this moment that you move on the hearts of your people. And we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.